Hello, uh, welcome back. In the previous lecture, uh, previous two lectures, we were looking at uh, uh, applications of Bayesian whole principle, right? And then uh, while we were doing this, we came across a, a small uh, application where we showed that uh, you know if you if you take uh, six or more uh, people, then you know among these people you can always find either three people who know each other was met each other or three people who are strangers who has never met each other right now uh, this result uh, is you know is one of the uh, you know, one of the starting points in in a huge area in community what is called ramsey theory and uh, uh, there there can be many uh, many generalizations of this and this generalizations uh, are kind of also related with uh, you know uh, pgn whole principle in some sense we will we'll see that uh, uh, in a moment and, and try to look at today's lecture with the uh, more general theorem of ramsey and then uh, we will see that uh, you know how it is a generalization of our pgn whole principle okay so <clears throat> What what the theorem that we proved was saying that if you have a graph, right? We we also looked at the graph version of the same. If we have a graph, and the graph uh, has six or more vertices, right? We will take a six vertex graph for example, and you color, you know, and and you uh, you know you you put all possible edges, right? You consider the complete graph, and then you color all the uh, all the uh, edges with just two colors, right? Then we were able to show that you will find a, either a, a red triangle or a blue triangle, right? A complete graph on three vertices with all edges having red color or blue color. It's mutual strangers or mutual friends. Now suppose instead of six, suppose we had only five, right? So we, we use the fact that, you know, uh, we had uh, six vertices at least to apply the PGN principle. Now, you know, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, smaller graphs, you cannot have uh, such a property. But let us let us now show that if you have only five vertices in the graph, then we need not have the property. Okay? So I'm going to give a five vertex graph. See, here is a five vertex complete graph. And I have given a two coloring, right, of the edges. So all the, you know, 10 edges are here. And then, you know, this five edges, five cycle, I give, uh, red color and then in the inside you know, I look at this five edges and then also give uh, blue color so this colors all the edges but the point is that you cannot find a triangle of the same color right you cannot find a single color triangle right if you take any of the blue edges you know, they never form a triangle right they form a five cycle and outside also it forms a five cycle so we needed at least six. Right? So uh, six is the smallest number with this property. Now, if you have anything larger, uh, you know, we already saw that we always have the property because once, you know, six will do this, you can always take a subset with six and that has this property. The entire set has this property. So, and and we use pgn whole principle for the sixth case like this right you had at least three of the same color and then you know you look at the edges between those three neighbors and those neighbors you can see that whichever way you color is either creates a triangle of either red which is or or blue now so this talks about coloring the edges of a triangle with two colors what if we allow more colors, right? See, what, what essentially the Ramsey theorem was saying, we said that, you know, when, you know, in, in, when you try to make things more chaotic, as far as the, you know, the set that we are considering is really huge, then you can still find some order within that, right? So, uh, here is the uh, question. That suppose I increase more colors, then what can you say? Suppose I say that I use, instead of two colors, I use k colors. 
So if you if you take k colors and color the edges of a complete graph with k different colors, what is the smallest number of vertices which can guarantee there will be a, a complete graph of let's say you know either triangle or something larger like you know four vertex complete graph, five vertex complete graph, whatever, uh, where all the edges have the same color. Right? You can ask this. Now one question is that does there exist uh, such a small number, right? Such a such a not small, such an integer such that after that you can always guarantee this. Now it turns out that there exists always. So, but this needs proof, and uh, you know we are not going to prove it at this moment. But I will I will let you think about it and maybe try to prove for uh, some special uh, cases of so just uh, uh, just two colors uh, with a larger number of clicks. Okay, so here is the general uh, question <laughs> or the theorem of Ramsey in a slightly more general form. You will find even more general form later. So let uh, C1 to CK uh, be K different colors and uh, N1 to NK be integers where N i at least 2. Okay. Then you can find some integer, okay, R of N1 to NK. Okay, so n1 to nk are the numbers. So you know in the in the problem that we looked earlier, we were looking at we need a complete graph on three vertices, which is all blue, or three vertices which is all red. Right? Here you are saying that you have n1 vertices, n2 vertices, etc. nk vertices. Then you are asking for uh, a, either a complete graph on n1 vertices where all the edges have color c1, n2 vertices all the edges have color c2 or nk vertex a complete graph where all the edges have color ck okay so so the claim that the theorem says that then there exists an integer r of n1 to nk which let's say p uh, such that any edge coloring of the complete graph on these many vertices kp with the k colors c1 to ck must contain either a k n1 colored c1 or a k n2 colored c2 or a k n k colored ck this is something which you cannot avoid so as far as the number is large enough right as far as the number is larger than r of n1 to nk okay uh, yes so yeah i mean yeah so uh, Fine. Yeah, so so when, when P is larger than R of N1 to NK or whatever something, then uh, you know you can always consider this, uh, some subgraph and then that subgraph has this complete subgraph of same color inside, then you know the entire graph has this as subgraph. So that is okay. So we don't have to worry about writing in a different way. Okay, so this is the general form of Ramsey theorem, right? You have a K coloring of the edges of the complete graph. Uh, and then you are asking, can you find uh, smaller some complete graphs of certain orders where all the edges have the same color? Now, so in uh, using the same notation, what is R of M n? Right, R of M n says that you are looking for a complete graph. So you are looking at two coloring because there are only two arguments here, uh, and uh, you are looking at a complete graph uh, on M vertices as a subgraph with uh, the first color all the edges having the same color or a complete graph on n vertices where all the edges have the second color right so this is rmn okay now what we proved earlier was that using pj non principle r of 3 3 is equal to 6 okay if you have six or more vertices in the graph then you can always find a triangle right of the same color now what is r of 2 2 can you think of this and try to solve it very easy i think you can do it what about uh, r of 3 4 okay so r of 3 4 is equal to 9 now the question is that can you prove it can you come up with a proof that r of 3 4 is equal to 9 uh, again these things i don't know i mean you know maybe it's much more difficult to prove r of 3 5 r of 4 4 and r of 3 3 3 right this so you are three coloring now, right? 
and show that if you have 18 vertices or more then you will contain a uh, triangle of first color or second color or third color okay so the, these numbers we already know right for these small values now what about r of 5 5 okay so r 5 5 ask for a complete graph on five vertices as a right like something like this complete graph on five vertices but all the edges must have the same color so a complete graph on five vertices where all the edges have the first color right red or a complete graph on five vertices where all the edges have the color blue right now what is the smallest such number with this property well we still don't know the exact value okay? what we know is that it is between 4, 43 and 49 okay r55 is between 43 and 49 now what is R66, right, you can ask. Now, I want to tell you a story. Okay, so this is this is a story, uh, you know, there is a, this is a, uh, a story of uh, what Paul Erdos, a very famous mathematician, many of you might have already heard about him, used to say, okay. So when, when he talks about problems related to Ramsey number, he, he will say this following joke, okay. But half serious, not, not just a joke. So the, the joke is the following that. So he says that see R55, he believes it is very difficult to compute. Okay? Very difficult indeed. To find exactly. We still don't know, as I told you, we still don't know what is exact value. But he says that uh, suppose, suppose, you know, suppose some uh, alien forces, right? You know, alien forces come, like you know, from some other galaxy. They come here or some other, you know, star system from our galaxy but they are vastly more superior to us they have all kind of technology you know they can have it you know they have something like you know what you see in this kind of uh, sci-fi movies right you know you, you can just destroy a planet you know with some weapon so they are so powerful that they, they have such uh, weapons and they come here and then they you know uh, tell us that well we will uh, let you leave if you tell us the value of r55 okay then he says that maybe you know we can put all our forces together put all the computers to work for the same question you know do some parallel computation all the mathematicians work on their own you know, or, or work together to find out this value maybe uh, we can uh, save our planet right by finding the value and telling them the correct value but suppose they ask for R66, just kill them before they even think of attacking us. Because he says that it is not, I mean, at least he believes that it is not possible. Okay, I mean, not with the current knowledge and techniques and all we have, at least. It's what, uh, uh, you know, uh, he says. So, yeah, so. So finding, you know, Ramsey numbers precisely is a very, very difficult problem. So people try to find, uh, you know, bounds like upper bound, lower bound, etc. We will not go into any of those things. Not in this course. Uh, or maybe at the end we can try to try to prove some lower bounds or something, or even upper bound maybe uh, using some some arguments. Okay. Now. Uh, you know some some new techniques that we will learn maybe now on the other hand we can find some you know some you know, not necessarily great looking but you know some kind of upper bound without much difficulty so for that uh, what i want to do is i want you to show that rmn exists okay well, at least try, okay. So try to show that R M N exists by showing an upper bound for it. See, what we are saying is that, you know, if a number uh, is larger than R M N, then of course uh, we can guarantee that there will be a M complete graph or an N complete graph of red color or blue color, right? But uh, when we say we find an upper bound, right, we are saying that okay, we don't know precise value of R M N. But if you make sure that, you know, if the number is maybe much, much larger than the actual value of RMN, right, you go, it's much larger than, let's say, 
20,000 m times n or something or like you know 20,000 all power m times n or something like that right? whatever some number or m raised to 2 raised to m and 2 raised to n or something then uh, can you say at least in that case that uh, you know anything larger than that will contain a m complete upper end. so this this kind of some you know some weird much larger number uh, can be an upper bound saying that anything a larger so therefore it says that it exists because you know we know that as far as you go above this you are guaranteed so it means that it exists definitely we don't know the, what is the smallest one but we know still such things exist so prove that rm and x is right rm and x is uh, by by showing some argument maybe induction or something that you know well anyway think about it and try it i'm not giving it as homework but it's not part of this work that we are looking at but it will be instructive and interesting okay so here is the question can you prove that rm and x is that is for every n m belongs to n plus there is a positive integer rm and such that a red blue coloring of the edges of complete graph on p vertices for p greater than or equal to rm n must contain a copy of km for all uh, whose edges uh, having blue color or a kn where all uh, edges are red color so one of these must be present okay now <clears throat> an even more generalized question that we can ask okay so what's called ramsey theorem for hypergraphs so we, when we talked about graphs what was what was a graph for us right the graph was basically a set we had a set of vertices right and then some two elements of this right so we were uh, you know restricting ourselves to binary relations now suppose we you know instead of binary relations we look at arbitrary relations right so we're talking about arbitrary subsets uh, then you have what is called uh, uh, hypergraphs okay so a hypergraph is basically a set together with a collection of subsets okay so e is a, just a collection of subsets we don't even say what uh, kind of uh, sets are there so elements of s are called vertices and the sets are called hyper edges so here is an example right you have this uh, five vertex uh, no four ver uh, yeah five vertex uh, graph hypergraph and where now I have these edges, right? So these two elements of set is an edge. These two elements of set is an edge. Then there's three elements of set is also an edge. Okay, so this, no. So what if you give numbers like one, two, three, etc. to this, like to say this is one, this is two, this is three, this is four, this is five. Then our vertex set is the set one, two, five, right? Then what are the edge sets? So edge is basically, uh, 1, 2, 3 is some edge, 1, 2, 3 is an edge, then 4, 5 is an edge, and then 3, 4 is an edge. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 3, 4. So these are all edges of uh, this hypergraph. Right? So this is an edge, right? 1, 2, 3. So in earlier we had only two elements of this, but now we can have any kind of uh, subsets. You can even just have one, right? One element subset. that is also allowed. When you let's say that you have uh, uh, you have this, right? This is one. So I can say that this is also an edge. So this is okay. Now, <coughs> yeah. yeah. Now, uh, you know, when you have this kind of arbitrary uh subsets you know it's even more difficult to deal with so we will we'll often look at a slightly more restricted version that we call uniform hypergraphs so a k uniform hypergraph is basically a collection of k element subsets of us so we only look at k for some fixed k like a, when it is two uniform hypergraph it is just a graph when it is three uniform hypergraph then you have all the edges have uh, three vertices inside, right? All the edges have three vertices inside. So here is an edge, here is another edge, here is another edge, and then here is 
another edge. So, uh, yeah, and then when we have all possible three element subsets part of this edges, then it's called a complete T uniform hypergram. So I denote it by KTN or KNT. Okay. The complete T uniform hypergraph set of all T element subsets of an N element set. So this N says the, the subscript says the number of vertices and the superscript says the cardinality of the edges, right? Not cardinality of the edge set for each edge, what is the? So here uh, we have given a three uniform hypergraph, not necessarily, not a complete one. So now here is the general form of Ramsey theorem. So it again, it says the existence of a positive integer are T now, right? Because we are talking, you know, talking specifically about T uniform uh, hypergraphs. RT of N1 to NK, the smallest number such that a can any k coloring of the hyper edges, right? So now instead of coloring the edges, we are coloring the hyper edges, right? All this, you know, this thing I will color with uh, a color. Let's say red. This will color with blue. This color with again red. Maybe this also red, right? Something like that. So any uh, k coloring of the hyper edges of k p t contains, right? K N I T of color C i for some i, okay. So K N one T of color C one, K N two T of color C two, etc. K uh, N K uh, T of color C K. One of these, uh, yeah. Uh, for every p greater than or equal to rt of n1 to nk. Okay. So this k coloring, I will assume that the colors we have used are c1 to ck. Okay. So earlier we noted, uh, noted it. Here we I am not writing it specifically. We will assume that the k coloring means that color is c1 to ck, just some index here. Okay. okay, so that is the generalized form of Ramsey theorem. Okay. Now we want to see why this is a generalization of Bayesian whole principle. Right, that is what we started with. Right, we started by saying that we are going to look at Ramsey theorem and say that it is a generalization of Bayesian whole principle. Now, how do you see that? Can you think about a way to see this and relate it with the Bayesian whole principle? So, if you want, think uh, for a few minutes by pausing the video and then uh, continue later. So, <clears throat> first observation is that suppose t is equal to one. So when t is equal to 1, what happens? Then we are looking at one uniform hypergraph, which means that we have just vertices and every vertex, you know, you have an edge, right, by itself, which means that there is nothing happening, you know, just the set itself, right, there is nothing else really there, right. We can say that which of them belongs to edges, but that's it. But if you are looking at complete graph, then of course, all of them are basically edges. So, I'm looking at one uniform hypergraph R1 of N1 to NK. Say that I want N1 vertices of the color 1, N2 vertices of the color 2, or NK vertices of color K. Right? But, but this is something that we already saw, right? What we saw was that, like, uh, if you were uh, uh, coloring, let's say, n1 plus n2 plus etc plus nk minus k plus 1 vertices 